at the things that separate us but if you think about it there is more than what connects us than what divides us connectivity is everything to first nations people connectivity is not just about communication making contact and being in contact it's about relationships those meaningful, sustainable relationships and engagement with one another and the environment around us. First Nations people have always thought about, have always long held the importance of connectivity and how that can improve our health, our well-being, but also to safeguard our environment. After all, we all share this beautiful world, planet Earth. So I ask you this question. What gives you a sense of connection? I guess I could say I've been fortunate to have experienced a deep connection you know, through my time, through my upbringing, through my work in the community and out on country on the land, the sea, and in the environment. I kind of started, you know, back when I was young, looking up at the sky, looking at the moon, the stars, where I wanted to be an astronomer, and, uh, or an astronaut, or something along those lines. And I can remember looking at my father, who was an indigenous ranger back then, and part of the fire brigade. I see he had this massive responsibility, working for the community, working for the environment. And as I started to get older, I started working in the tourism industry as a cultural performer and sitting down with my elders and my community members and talking with them and, and learning from them about who I am, my identity, um, where I'm from, and realizing, and you know, hey, you know, I grew up up in Cranda in the rainforest and then realizing, actually, I, I am a, a, a descendant of, of traditional people who are from the coast of Cairns. And that my people have had this relationship, this interaction with the wet tropics rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef. And it's from there I sort of learned about the Irukandji jellyfish, which is named after our tribe back in the 1960s when it was discovered off the coast of Cairns near Palm Cove. And uh, this, this little jellyfish being named after our group and starting this connection between us, this relationship between our people and this animal. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> or a bad thing. <laughs> and then sitting down with some of the elders, and uh, one of them said, you know, country, country is alive. It's always talking to us, it's always listening to us, it's always trying to tell us something. And he also said, it is a reflection of your identity and it also brings us knowledge. Now I sat and think, thought about those words and thought, wow, and if I look out, look if I look out and, and see the ocean or see the forest, see the land, knowing that it's, it could be a mirror, I'm looking at myself. What does that really mean? And that it has a lot of knowledge out there that we got a lot to learn about and uh, connect with and to understand. By understanding what's there, we understand ourselves. 
And then I begin to realize, hey, there are many other people out there who have connection, who experience this strong connection, this energy with the land, with each other. So colorful, magical, but it is also mysterious. It could be very dangerous out there. But as beautiful as it is, it's also rich in history, rich in heritage. To the First Nations people, there are about 70 traditional owner groups up and down the coast of the Great Barrier Reef who have maintained uh, ongoing connections and relationships with this cultural seascape, as we call it. And that the environment has become a major part of our knowledge, of our identity, and how interconnected we are, and it's inseparable from one another. And so we are dependent of the land and the sea, and it is dependent of us. And when we are removed from that particular place, the place where we believe, First Nations people believe that the country gets upset, it gets, uh, it misses us. And therefore, there is a, an effect on our well-being. And through our, our knowledge system, our way of life, the country, our well-being, being sustainable is all part of a natural ethos. That's all what we live by, being sustainable and making sure that we are well, making sure that everyone else is well, including the animals, the plants, and the country. And for instance, you know, we go to the, go to the forest and we might extract a piece of wood from the tree, break it into two, and then we've extracted a piece of wood from the forest, but without cutting down the whole tree. That way the tree will still provide food and shelter and habitat for animals, for us as well. So we're being sustainable in that extraction and the use of the wood. And then the minute we tap the wood, it has a natural sound, a nice organic sound to it, all in the one motion. And by doing that, I actually feel good. Now, if we start to put dance movements into the, the rhythm of our beat, of the heart, it's a bit of physical exercise, we feel good. And this is part of connectivity, the relationship and that, that importance. However, today, I believe we have a problem. I believe that we have become disconnected. Not only from the place, the environment, but we've also become disconnected from one another. Most likely from everyday pressures of everyday lives. Some from this disconnect have become unaware of this disconnection. Some have become less respectful and less appreciative of this relationship, this engagement. It has also got into policy and decision-making as well. The disconnect between decision-makers, managers, and the country in which they're making decisions and, and actions for. I believe some of the solutions to this is that we must be receptive. We must embrace and must be curious about this new perspective, embracing this perspective, but also trying to restore connection at all levels, from the bottom to the top, everyone in between. We are all one, so let's tackle the issues together as a people, as a unity, as a unified approach. But it's also when we're making our decisions, when we're doing our actions, it must be where of our consequences of those decisions. Some of the opportunities from this will not only restore a connection with one another in the environment, we will also have an opportunity to connect with local people and place. We will also have an opportunity to invest and be a part of that solution 
And most importantly, you'll be able to feel good about it and giving back. We have become disconnected. We need to harness the power of relationship and connection and that we need to focus on what connects us, not what divides us. Thank you.